What's up guys, hope you're having a good day. I want to start this video by saying a big thank you to everyone that hit the like button and left a comment in last week's video that I put out where I talked about what the stock market and the S&P 500 would likely do next. I didn't realize that you guys would like content like this, but after the positive response, I'm definitely going to keep doing it. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about what Bitcoin is likely to do this week and over the next few weeks. So if you want me to keep producing videos like this in addition to my MMA content, please hit the like button below and leave a comment. As ever though, I do need to remind you that this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, so please don't sue me, bro. If you sell your house, buy Dogecoin with it and get absolutely wrecked. This video is just for entertainment purposes only, and please, 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 please do your research on any of the stuff we discuss in this video. So this is a massive week for us. UFC 259 coming up on Saturday. We've got three amazing title fights and a stacked card. I'm very, very much looking forward to bringing you a breakdown video this week where we take a deep dive into all the fights taking place on this weekend's main card from a betting perspective. But if you'd like to join me in researching the fights this week, all you need to do is head on over to my Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash diary of a pro gambler. I will leave a link to that in the description below. It's going to be a lot of fun. Come hang out. Unfortunately, I'm not able to live stream my research for all fights on YouTube because the YouTube copyright algorithm is very, very aggressive. So if ever we want to take a look at kind of like, you know, weigh-in footage or, you know, clips of past fights from promotions outside the UFC, we're not able to do that on YouTube because the stream gets shut down uh, by the copyright algorithm. So join us over on Twitch where there's a lot more freedom and uh, and I think you'll enjoy it. So we're now going to get into what moves Bitcoin is likely to make next. And the reason why it's important to kind of take a look at the information in how an asset is moving in terms of the price it's very, very important because it enables us to put together a game plan. So just like with betting on MMA, it's very, very difficult to predict exactly what's going to happen in a fight. But like with anything, we can predict multiple likely outcomes. And then by paying careful attention to how things are starting to play out, we can actually get a read on the most likely outcome. And that's kind of like my approach to trading. And that's going to help us kind of figure out what Bitcoin is likely to do next. It's the same approach I take to live betting on MMA, live betting on sports. If you consider all possible outcomes and you're aware of all possible outcomes, you could start to spot what outcome is going to play out. Bitcoin trading price action is exactly the same thing so there are three possible outcomes with what bitcoin is going to do next and in this video we're going to be going through each scenario and talking you through what to look for to know if bitcoin is going to go up if it's going to go down or if it's going to go sideways and i know when you go on twitter or you go on youtube lots of people are producing content on this topic you know some people saying that bitcoin is going to go to a hundred thousand dollars some people saying bitcoin is going to crash this video is going to use technical analysis where we study the charts to give us the best indicator of what is likely to happen next because bots trading al uh, trading algorithms market makers they all use technical analysis and the charts to help plot out price action. And so by learning technical analysis and the charts gives us some very clues, very great clues as to what is to happen next, because certain laws of technical analysis are always respected. So we can see that Bitcoin here on the daily time frame is doing something very, very interesting. We can see that we've had this nice uptrend. Price actions come down, touched this pink line here called the 55 exponential moving average, and it has bounced found a little bit of support here and now we need to figure out its next steps you can see it did something similar here right you get this nice uptrend you come down touch this pink line the 55 exponential moving average it finds support and then bounces and continues the uptrend so the real question we're looking at here is does this happen again right do we get this uptrend come down find support on this 55 exponential moving average go sideways for a little bit and then work our way back up to new all-time highs, $60,000, $70,000, $100,000. Is that what's next for Bitcoin? Or do we get something similar to what happened back in 2017, where we could see if we go all the way back in time, all the way back, do we get something like 2017, where you get this nice uptrend, 
a retest of this 55 exponential moving average, a little bounce, and then it rolls over and dies and literally stays in a downtrend for three years. It's possible, right? Everything goes through market cycles. Bitcoin is up an insane amount, you know, just since October, uh, it's up 400%. And we know market cycles, what goes up must come down. So we need to be open-minded on it. So if we take a look at the price action here, very, very, very clear that Bitcoin has found a little bit of support on this 55 exponential moving average, which you would expect. So this enables us to put a game plan together. Game plans are very, very important because it means that you're not reactive, you're not defensive, you are aware of all possible scenarios and you can act accordingly because you've thought about them beforehand. Take Jimmy Rivera against Pedro Munoz from this past weekend. One of the reasons why Jimmy Rivera struggled so badly was because he was on the back foot. He was in a defensive state of mind, a reactive state of mind where he had to react to what Pedro Munoz was doing. This made it very difficult to control his heart rate, control his breathing and you know, take the fight to Munoz and put Munoz on the back foot. It's always important to have a game plan and a strategy so that no matter what happens, we're prepared. And the purpose of this video is going to be helping you come up with a strategy so that you can look at this daily time frame on Bitcoin, know exactly what's going to happen, ignore the hyper bowl on Twitter and YouTube where people are calling from Bitcoin to 100k or Bitcoin to crash. Just by paying attention to what we're going to talk about here is going to help you identify what your next move should be and what Bitcoin's next move is likely to be. So... First of all, let's briefly go over trends. So all, like we spoke about in last week's video, all price action on every single financial asset in the world is constructed, is made up of trends, uptrends and downtrends. If we look at Dogecoin's chart, for example, we go to the five minute chart on Dogecoin, we can see that price action consists of a series of uptrends and downtrends, highs and lows. This is a high and this is a low. This is a high and this is a low. This is a low, this is a high. Highs and lows, right? So you've got uptrends where you get higher highs and higher lows. And you've got downtrends where you've got lower highs and lower lows. This is Dogecoin, right? It, it's a meme crypto. Think of the most, th th think of the financial asset that is a million miles away from Dogecoin. Something that, you know, can possibly be compared to Dogecoin in any way. Think of like a really cookie cutter boring stock maybe something like let's pick i don't know microsoft right microsoft is a really cookie cutter stock that you know everyone's got in their portfolio it's been around forever and it's always going to be around forever look at the structure of this chart this is the five minute time frame on microsoft exactly the same as dogecoin if we bring dogecoin up here uh, let's get the Dogecoin chart up and we look at, say, uh, say the 30-minute time frame. This is Dogecoin's 30-minute time frame. As you can see, uptrends and downtrends. Higher, high, higher highs, higher lows. Higher highs, higher lows. You know, lower highs, lower lows. You look at Microsoft, 30-minute time frame. Looks very, very, very similar, right? Just patterns consisting of highs and lows basically to form uptrends and downtrends so it's very very important to bear that in mind because no matter what time frame you're looking at no matter what financial asset you're looking at ultimately the chart is going to print you know higher highs and higher lows if it's in an uptrend or lower highs and lower lows if it's in a downtrend so by being very aware of how trends are constructed helps us to be aware of what is likely to happen next so you can see here Back in January with Bitcoin, you have this nice clear uptrend, higher highs and higher lows. Then you have a big sell off and you put in a lower high and you get into a short term downtrend here, uh, which lasts for about three weeks uh, before the uptrend continued. So remember what we said earlier on. Now we're just looking at what is likely to happen next, right? So the first possible outcome is doing something similar to what happened here where we trained the, change the trend from this uptrend to a downtrend and if that happens what you're going to be looking for is this key level this high here this is the last high this is a major high at around call it approximately 57,500 now always remember that the top and bottom of a candlestick um 
when you're looking at daily opens and closes, you really want to ignore these wicks. So we're going to put this 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 blue line here, this line in the sand, up at the just the top of this candlestick here, annoying, uh, ignoring the wick. So this is the previous high, around fifty-seven thousand four hundred, approximately in that region, is what you want to watch. So now what we're looking for is. If Bitcoin is going to roll over, establish a downtrend and start to move down, you know, quite significantly from where we are now, what you're going to see is we've got this uptrend. We've come down, found support on the 55 exponential moving average. If we're about to go even lower, you will now get a bounce, set a lower high underneath the previous high of 57,400. And then you'll get the move down, which will probably be quite nasty, quite violent. As soon as a lower high gets set, you're going to have the shorts piling. You're going to have people that understand technical analysis selling. And it's going to push, it's going to create a lot of downward pressure. This is why Bitcoin is in a very difficult position at the moment. Because everyone that understands technical analysis is going to be looking for the same thing. As soon as they see, you know, a double top, which could signal you know, a lower high underneath the previous high of 57,400. Everyone's going to start selling. Shorts are going to come in, which obviously suppresses price action on Bitcoins. This is the first thing we need to be looking at. So if you're interested in Bitcoin at the moment and what happens next, just know that we are likely to bounce here. This is worst case scenario for Bitcoin where we set a lower high and roll over and move down significantly and establish a new daily downtrend. This is worst case scenario, but just be careful because we're very, very likely to see a big bounce in Bitcoin this week. Because remember, price action needs to move up now to potentially set a lower high. This is often called suckers rally where you get a huge sell off, a bounce and on the bounce back up. Everyone gets, you know, excited. We're back. You know, all that fear is alleviated. People think we're going to the moon again. And then you know, the charts print a lower height and people get dumped on. You need to be really careful of this. We are probably going to see a substantial bounce on Bitcoin this week. You're going to go on Twitter. You know, you're going to see Bitcoin maybe floating around, you know, 53,000, 54,000. You know, when it hits 50K, everyone will be calling for the moon again. Saying Bitcoin's going to 100k, be very, very careful and mindful of the fact that until we close a daily candle above 57,400, very, very likely that we're just setting a new lower height to establish a new daily downtrend. You need to be really, really careful and don't buy into the hype. Market movers fuck with people and throw this kind of you know candlestick pattern formation out there because they know they can trap a lot of people with this bounce people fomo back in they can trap people in bad positions before they dump on them and that is exactly what happened here get this nice uptrend sell off you know everyone's fearful everyone's in despair you know who who remembers back here when bitcoin got rejected hard off 40k people were calling for bitcoin to go back to 15,000 20,000 what happened you get this really nice bounce and then people get dumped on and price action moves all the way down to 30k so you need to be very very careful of that this is the first scenario so just have this in mind if, when we bounce this week very very likely we'll bounce you have to watch out for the lower height and just have it in your mind until price action closes a daily candle above 57,400 it doesn't mean anything when you see people talking about 100k, it doesn't mean anything. The bulls have to prove that they've got enough juice to pump this back up above 57,400 and uh, keep the uptrend going. Uh, sorry, yeah, keep the uptrend going, which which brings me nicely on to actually what we should we should talk about next. So that's the first uh, possibility that the the downtrend. We'll now look at the other possibility, which would be the uptrend. It's the complete opposite of what I've just described, and it's exactly what we can see happen here, where you had the uptrend. The sell-off found support on the 55 EMA bounced and just continued the uptrend. That is the second scenario where you would go here with the uptrend, the sell-off found support on the 55 EMA, and then the bounce, boom, would just take you to the moon. That's the second scenario. 
and the way that you can work out if this is going to happen is if you get a daily candle close above 57,400. If you close a daily candle above 57,400, it's going to be incredibly bullish and I would imagine a move up pretty quickly will completely annihilate 60k and at that point 65, 70, 80k could quite easily be on the menu so again it's that important line that important level to pay attention to 57,400 it's our line in the sand any double top any sign of a, a lower high being put in below 57,400 downtrend death and destruction if we blow past 57,400 the moon is back on the moon is back on the cards could be 100k you know who knows who knows but it's just important to remember that everything goes in market cycles. I'm not saying one day Bitcoin won't reach 100k, but Bitcoin's on a massive run up now, up 500, 600%. What goes up must come down. Nothing can keep going up forever and ever and ever and ever. And obviously there is a lot of fear in the market right now. So if we're dealing with probabilities, it's more likely, in my opinion, with how big of a run up Bitcoin has been on, that we will set a lower high rollover, establish a new daily downtrend, or just go sideways for a little bit, which brings us on to scenario number three. So scenario number three would be a weekly equilibrium where price needs to just spend some time going sideways just to figure itself out for a little bit. What that would look like is we would probably see price action move up. We come down, bounce off the 55 EMA, rally all the way back up to 57 or fi fi about 57,500 get rejected come back down to the 55 EMA but remember last time where we said we would roll over or the, the first example where we would roll over basically start a downtrend and just sell off and it would be death and destruction in a weekly you know tightening range you would then bounce back off the 55 and you would go back up to test the high of 47,500 get rejected boom 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 and just bounce around in this range for a little while that's been established there until price action either has enough juice to bounce break the previous high of 57,400 and you know, continuous journey to 60, 70, 80,000. Or if we would run out of steam, run out of buyers, the fear in the market would be too much for Bitcoin to break the height of 57,400. Price action would get broken down and eventually we would break and then we'd, we'd, we'd establish the downtrend. The best, best asset I can think of that's going through this at the moment would be Amazon. So if I show you Amazon, may make a little bit more sense to you so if we look at amazon's daily chart we can see that oh actually it might have broken no it hasn't broken yet so we can see with amazon you have this nice uptrend here which is very very nice you come down find support around about the 55 ema the 55 ema drags price action back up but there's not quite enough strength in amazon to break this previous high which is at 3,557 so we get rejected again but there's not quite enough weakness in Amazon to go into a daily downtrend so you see the low here see this low here and this low here that just creates a tightening range on Amazon where it's just been going sideways you go up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down and you bounce around in this range for a while we've been bouncing around in this range now since about september and eventually amazon will either run out of steam break this level and start a daily downtrend or it will find support on this level bounce and boom back to the moon and that is kind of like the best example i can find at the moment which shows you scenario three for bitcoin so by this point in the video you're probably thinking well gee thanks chris uh, you basically haven't taught me anything here all you've basically said is three things can happen and how the fuck am i supposed to know what to do because you haven't told me what, what what's going to happen so i'm left guessing i now have absolutely no idea well remember all you need to worry about is the level 57,500. All you need to do when you wake up every day and check Bitcoin's price action is keep that level in mind. And what you might want to do is also keep this level in mind as well, which is currently set at about 45,114. 
all you need to worry about from here is if the price goes above 57,400 and closes above 57,400 on a daily candle, just know that we're back to the moon. We're going to blow through 60K, 65K, 70K is very, very likely. But if you see Bitcoin's price action close below 40, 45,114, you know we're probably in a little bit of trouble and Bitcoin might now be in a downtrend. I will warn you though, because of how much Bitcoin has run up and because you know there's a lot of fear in the market right now and a lot of euphoria you know when things are going up everyone's excited you know everything's going to the moon everyone's happy gme pumps and fucking bitcoin going to the moon and and dogecoin everyone gets super euphoric when things go up but last week when there was a sell-off in the stock market and a sell-off in bitcoin people were getting really fearful so this market or these markets are driven by fear and greed the market makers that you know control price action in a way that you know forms these trends in the first place know this this is why you get these suckers rally bounces to trap people and so just know shit's probably going to get crazy over the next few weeks and also know that moves will probably come very quickly so for example if we do close a daily candle above 57,400 we are probably going to moonshot very very quickly i'd imagine a move to 60k almost immediately and price 65 70k very 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 soon after that by the same token if we do get rejected and we set a lower high below 57,400 a very very fast move down is very very likely because what you got to understand is like i say everyone's looking at this everyone everyone that understands technical analysis everyone on wall street Everyone that controls price action on Bitcoin, the market makers, they're aware of all this stuff. And so as soon as we get confirmation as to which of these three scenarios is going to play out, expect the moves to come very, very quickly. And like I say, we can see that if we go all the way back to 2017, you can see how fast the move came when the eventual rug pull came, right? You look, as soon as we set this, uh, this, uh, this lower high here, very very fast move down you know from you know in the space of a month from january the 7th to february the 5th which is less than a month bitcoin dropped 60 percent I'm not saying that's what's going to happen here. It probably won't there's a lot more strength in the bitcoin market now a lot more institutions investment funds hedge funds you know obviously a lot more people uh, have put a lot more money into bitcoin now so they've got you know powerful people there's a lot more at stake so unlikely we see bitcoin drop 60 percent from here but it is possible so you gotta keep all possibilities in mind and have a game plan so you don't get caught with your pants down so i hope you enjoyed this video uh, if you did please hit the like button below and leave a comment and let me know what you thought and if you would like me to keep doing these videos, please let me know. But with that, I've got some MMA fights to research. So thank you for watching. I'm about to hit up the fight research for UFC 259. And like I say, I'll be back with a breakdown video for the main card fights very, very soon. Nice one, guys. Have a great week. Love you very much. And thank you for watching. It means a lot. Cheers, guys.